Hey, this is Cameron, and welcome to the practice log. All right, well, it's almost a night session. It will be night by the end of it, for sure. Well, based on the title, you might know what you're getting into today, but let's talk about it a bit. I'll see you in the chair. Oh, yeah. Hey, guess what? They finally restocked Sierra Nevada in my gas station. Isn't that lovely? Man, I might get a glass for this thing. How I've missed you so. I really have. God, that tastes good. Such a good beer. They should sponsor me. I mean, I really talk them up. If I ever accept any sponsorship, it'll be Sierra Nevada. Mark my words. It's Friday, and I'm not doing an extravaganza. I don't know. I had stuff to do earlier in the day, so I didn't get to record the pieces. I have a video lined up. I'm gonna save it, though. So I kind of just want to chill and relax, and TBH... That's texting lingo for to be honest for the older viewers. I don't really feel like playing any of my pieces and I, I don't really feel like doing anything other than talking about improv, which tends to happen every two weeks or so. Being a teacher, which I am one, of course, you know that, check the description. One of the most difficult things is getting my students to think creatively about music and like all of the theory concepts that we go over, getting them to like make music with it. It's so hard to get to that place. And I've come to a few ideas to how to like get it to happen but it's hard and I remember the road that I've taken to learn how to improvise and I don't think I was ever really taught either I was just extremely tenacious I would just sit and just try to improvise for like hours for weeks and months after I had already been drilling my scales for like a year or two so I just really wanted it and I just kind of natured my way through it I have like methods now that I use that I find work because I, I think most people probably aren't willing to do that and I mean I also do it I, I think that my mind works well on the guitar fretboard so like even as a kid when I was just like thinking about it the guitar has always kind of made sense to me and that's why I love it so much and I'm sure a lot of you feel that way too but yeah trying to get another person to understand all that stuff it's really hard but like I said I've been coming up with methods to help and, and I've been finding them effective kind of just want to go into some and I actually I feel like these improv videos I kind of make them a little too much about me and I'm just kind of doing my thing and I'm not like interested in actually showing you how I'm doing anything. So this one's going to be different. It's going to be me trying to show you stuff that you can do uh, really no matter where you are in your guitar journey. I'm pretty sure you could be a beginner and you could at least do like the first thing I'm going to show you. But yeah, so we're going to get into that. I might chill for a second. That's the only thing we're going to do today. We're not going to watch a video. Uh, I might talk a little bit. Oh, you know what? Maybe I'll answer a question. I've been taking this time to answer comment questions. So let's take a look at the comments section. Actually, before I get into this one, I got another comment about my feet. So I'm not going to say who it is because it's a kind of negative comment but somebody just basically said to put my feet away because it's like crude and uh distracting yeah that's this channel it's crude and distracting that's like the whole point of all this i mean how many classical channels have you found where they don't show their feet basically all of them you want me to be like everybody else no i'm good i have my own thing going on here you're getting me as myself if you like it hey let's hang out if not go watch some other guy who's wearing a suit who has a nice haircut and watch him play guitar but me i'm in my apartment Apartment, my feet are out, we're chilling, I'm having a beer, and we're gonna talk about improv, and I'm gonna answer a question. Uh, but that's what I have to say about, uh, if you don't like my feet, it's who I am. I don't wanna wear shoes, I'm in my apartment, you know? Where do I draw the line if I have to put on socks? Can we put on a top hat and a monocle too? Like I'm some fancy man? No. I don't think so. If I give an inch, like, who knows where it ends. So, I won't be doing that. Okay, but here's the real question. So, this one is from Verdiad1. Hey, I'm so sorry. But you said loving your channel. Woo, yeah, dude, loving it. Just found it. You're loving it and you just found it? Well, maybe watch a few more videos before you declare that. I'm just kidding, I appreciate it. I'm relearning the fugue after forgetting it post-lockdown. Yeah, that would've been a good time to learn the fugue, huh? I don't know what I was doing during lockdown. Not anything productive, I'm sure. It's inspiring me to be more focused and regimented in my practice over the last week. This episode is a bad example of that because I'm just not practicing. So that's actually a good lesson to you. Uh, be focused and regimented by default and then try to make it like the anomaly when you're not and then it's okay. And you know, we're still gonna be playing guitar. Like we're still thinking about music. I'm just not doing my usual stuff. But what is your musical story slash journey so far? How did you come to the guitar, other instruments, etc.? Like you said, uh, I've probably answered this before, which I have. I'm pretty sure. But I'll fill in some extra details because there, there's stuff that I'm sure I left out. I'll fill this in. So if you've been around 
around for a while, you know that I actually started with rock music, playing like Guns N' Roses and Jimi Hendrix and stuff. I remember even being like a kid, like elementary school age, I always envisioned myself playing the guitar. My brother, who's 10 years older than me, played guitar. I always just thought it was the coolest thing. And I remember when I heard the album American Idiot Green Day, like I remember when it came out, I heard the guitar, like the opening riff in that, the like... <laughs> Like that opening riff, and I was like, that is the coolest thing ever, my god. Ever since I was a little boy, I always envisioned myself being a guitarist. And then once I got a guitar in my hands when I was in sixth grade, which is kind of late for like how long I envisioned it, I just didn't have one around. And then finally my dad had a guitar, and I was like, let me play that. And he was like, yeah, sure. And uh, we had tabs printed out already. I started learning Sweet Child of Mine, and then the rest is history. I never stopped. I've never taken a break. I've never stopped. It's just been 14 or so years years of playing. Almost 15 years now. And I didn't actually get into classical until six years ago when I was 19 and I did it for university because before I was a jazzer. I wasn't that good though, but I switched to classical. It's a lot easier to get into academia through classical and I'm glad I did because I had a lot more fun learning classical guitar than I have with jazz. Like jazz is still fun on the side and you'll see like when we get into the improv stuff, you'll see that I, I still have a lot of like jazz influence like with the way I make melodies and stuff. So that's just to fill you in a little bit with a little bit of detail. Yeah, so you know, Green Day, American Idiot. Good album. I listened to it recently. I mean, there's some questionable stuff in it nowadays, but you know, it's, uh, it's, it's Green Day. Well, I've had a little bit of beer. Let's, um, maybe make our way to the piano bench, and I'm just gonna talk to you about scales and stuff. Let's go. If you look at the, uh, Google Drive document, the one that I shared that's on the channel description, you'll see that I have an improv folder and it has all the scales that I'm talking about. So, the unreasonable prerequisites that I mentioned in the last ones to know all these scales. those kind of bad. But we're gonna abandon all that for now, and we're just gonna stay in one key, which, believe me, that pains me a little bit because I've been thinking a lot about modulation. Uh, I was just watching a video on chromatic medians, but we're not gonna do any of that. We're just gonna stay in one key, and we're actually gonna stick to C major for now. Now, instead of looking at this big old scale, let's just look at the scale on one string. So, we're looking at E, that's our first string, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, and that's the repeat, and I like to go F, G, maybe A. All right, so there it is. Get comfortable with those notes. Let's talk about the magic and the power of sliding. So, we're playing E. We can't really slide to F. Doesn't really work that way, but let's play F. I want you to play F. Do it back at home. Play F, slide up to G. Okay, G, slide up to A, and so on. B, C, D, E, F, G, and then go backwards. All right, we're sliding around. And I talked about sliding in the last one, like sliding around with the pentatonic scale. We're just using the diatonic scale right now, so just all of our natural notes. And the first step, I would just see if you can get really comfortable just playing to a pulse, because everything that we do, we want it to be to a pulse. And then see if you can just move around like that. And I'm still playing to a pulse. You know, just moving around, just sliding. And right now I'm sliding around in seconds, of course. You can even work with sliding in thirds. And that's a really good way to memorize where everything is. Because ideally, you want to be so comfortable with this that you just know every single note. And it's not about like finding it as you go. Where you're like thinking about the intervals, but you can actually know where it all is. And like know where all the, the scale notes are. Doing thirds. 
And if you want to be an overachiever, you can do fourths. Whoa. I have to... Uh, no. That's hard. And then doubly so if you do fifths as well. Which, that movement is a bit much. But, I mean, it's good to at least be able to do it, you know. Going down and forth is fun. No! So, like, you know, try to get those wrong notes up. I, I haven't practiced, like, fourths that much. But just get comfortable with sliding. And you can do a lot with writing a melody, just sliding around your diatonic scale. And like, I'm using a couple of techniques there. Let's actually talk about the different sequences that you can do. So here are some that I like. You can do slur and then slide, or hammer on and pull off if you are a jock. Slurs if you're a nerd. Like that. Just going through the scale. You can put them together. Like that and then you can do different scale which like that was fast like obviously slow <laughs> I'm doing a Malmsteen to you all right now here it is slow uh, no so slow you know hammer on just going through the whole thing try to keep the pulse like you know as usual and this is all still on one string uh, more sequences that you can do you can do scales like this that's good to be able to do I almost see like when we do this Ooh, my shoulder is showing that's a bit risque I'm sorry about that that's the thing this is a risque channel I show my feet I show my shoulders we're showing skin here guys no prudes allowed uh, yeah I, and I feel like when I play like this, first I don't have to think about all the other strings and stuff. Which, like, it's just a lot to think about. And you can kind of treat the guitar as almost like a melodic instrument, like a trumpet or something. You just have less options for movement, so you're just kind of moving up and down. It feels like a different instrument, kind of, which is kind of nice. I think it's good for writing melodies, like you can... Like getting really good at those leaps. And I mean, some melodies work that way already, like you guys, you guys know this one? You can write melodies like that, which we're in G major now. Let me go back to C major. We our F natural there. You know, you can write a melody like that. greatest melody ever uh, but it's fine you get the idea though you can write the greatest melody eventually just do it a whole bunch i mean just see how much you can do with three notes like what if i do this like i just made that one up and just try to get fast with them eventually you know just get comfortable You can do like a really crazy one, like... Yeah, 
you know, you get the idea. Endless possibilities with the sequences that you can do. Just try to make a little repeating thing. And just see if you can move it around. So once you do that, once you create your endless sequences that you can do all in one string, you should be able to move around pretty well. I'm not even really having a regard for like what chord I'm playing either. Like I'm just kind of playing notes of C major. Now, and this is where things might start getting a little bit weird. We have all these notes that we're leaving out, right? Like that one, that one, that one. You know, all those. I mean, there's five that we're leaving out. <laughs> it's not that many. But we can still play those. Here's a way that we can play them. We can use them as chromatic embellishments. And there are a few ways that I like to look at embellishments. First, of course, we have diatonic embellishments. So if, like, if I want to embellish this note, maybe I'll go above diatonic, below diatonic, and then back. And those are neighbor tones, right? Okay. So maybe get good at those first, the diatonic one. Oop. Get good at those first. I was going up and then down. Maybe go down and then up. Get good at both of them. Maybe see if you can switch them around. Down, up. Up, down. So my melody is this. What if I go down, up? Up, down. Hmm. Right? Something to think about. You can uh, do your embellishments that way. Okay, now, chromatic neighbor tones. There are a few ways that you can do them. I'll just go over, like, a couple. There's one where you think about the diatonic scale, the note above you're thinking about it, and then the note below, no matter what, is always just going to be a half step below the note that you're emphasizing. Like that. So, so those are some chromatic embellishments, and you can use those to write your melody still. Like if you're doing your Romanza melody. Like that's... I had to change strings because I wanted to hit an E-flat there. Now, there are other things that you can do with embellishments, too. We can do stuff like one note. And we can actually disregard the scale entirely and do two chromatic notes above and then one below and even two below like that. See what I mean? So you can get pretty crazy with it. And then one above, two below. If I'm emphasizing that note, we can go, hmm. And it's kind of cool because, like, if we're emphasizing that note there, the note above is going to be the leading tone to that note, which kind of reminds you of harmonic minor. So if I'm playing in C major, right, then we get stuff like that. Pretty swanky. And you can really meander through it too. So there I did one above, two chromatic below, and then I hit the note, and then one above, one below. Both chromatic. And then you know, once you get comfortable with that, you can try moving on to the next string as well. And if you get really comfortable with both strings, then you can start putting them together. Like, learn where all your thirds are. And your sixes, of course. I get more comfortable. 
Maybe mix them together. Oh no! So that's stuff that you can just work with. I do think that we forget a lot of times that we can just play one string and we don't have to play our big scales that we know. I feel like a melodic instrument, thinking of it like this, it's almost like you have an organ and you have like this diagonal path of an organ and you're playing it like that only, when you can just play one keyboard to play like your melody, you know? And I feel like this is the one keyboard. And then you, you really only need the other ones if you want to just add more harmony. So you can see how, like, I, like, move here. Ooh. And I mean, two strings is a lot. So, you know, I'm not always using, like, the high strings for melody. I change keys. We're in E major, sorry.
Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Uh, so you know, stuffy, stuffy, woofy. Work on making melodies and stuff. Um, play to a pulse. That's like the most important thing. I know that my pulse is probably off, but I promise you, there is a pulse that I hear in my head, and I'm always playing to it. And I don't feel right if I'm not playing to a pulse. So don't just play randomly. Was any of that helpful? I hope that if some of that was new to you, you can employ that into your improv and use it. One string practice. One string is plenty. You can make some pretty banging melodies with just one string, I promise you. Treat it like its own instrument. That's what I would do. Okay, well, I think we can pretty much wrap this one up. I don't think I have much else to say about it. Yeah, if you have any questions about anything, I mean, feel free to ask them. I'm gonna do an improv video, like, every couple of weeks, I'm sure. Let the uh, questions build up, and I'll answer them at some point. All right, well, let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. Hey, well, you know, if you made it this far, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, all that stuff. Hopefully, you found that helpful. Yeah, and if you ever want to talk about this stuff in person, I offer lessons, so just let me know. And of course, if you have any questions about anything, leave a like, as I said. Uh, leave a like. Leave a comment. Leave a like, too. If you comment, I mean, come on. Anything else? I don't think so. I'm gonna see you tomorrow, and we're gonna get back to our regular practice. And there'll be an extravaganza in, like, seven to nine days or so. We're skipping this one. I'm sorry about that. Alright, well, I'll see you tomorrow.